Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look today at graphing a line using a table of values. All right, so we're going to basically do that. If we're, you're ever asked to graph a line and you're given an equation in standard form, one method to graph the line is to make what you call a table of values. A table of values looks like this. It has a column for x values and a column for y values. And that's what you're going to fill in. The x values, you can put anything you want in there. You need to have at least three points just to make sure that you know you've got the, a straight line. But you can have as many as you want. You can have four or five or six points. The more points you have, the more sure you are that you've done your work correctly. So here's our equation, 6x plus 3y equals 12. And what we're going to do, again, in the x values, you're just saying, where is it going to be along the x-axis? So you can pick any value. You can pick positive, negative. It doesn't really matter. And what we're going to do is rearrange this equation at first so that we're solving for our y values. That's what we want. We want. So we're going to get y by itself, and you'll see that this saves a little bit of time. I think we've done this in a previous lesson as well. So to get y by itself, you subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. As you see here, subtracting 6 from both sides of the equation leaves us with 3y is equal to 12 minus 6x. We usually will write that in this way so that the x values come before the numbers. Now, to further get y completely by itself, what we're going to do is divide both sides of this equation by 3. 3y three divided by 3 will give us y. Six, negative 6x six divided by 3 gives us negative 2x. And 12 divided by 3 gives us 4. Now, again, why do we do this? Because we're trying to fill in our y values. We don't want to have to subtract 6 times x from both sides of the equation every single time and divide by 3 every single time. So let's just do it once. We get the equation set up, and this is going to make our lives a lot easier. If you need a little bit of help with that, make sure to check out the lesson on linear equations, because it'll explain, again, when you get an equation in standard form, usually what you'll do is, is convert it into having your y by itself. Anyway. Our, our equation now it will help us solve for the value of y. All we need to do is take our x value and plug it into the equation where we see the letter x. So in this case, we'll start with 0. Negative 2 times 0 plus 4, 0 plus 4. And so y is equal to 4. We just plug that into our table. See, we're going to follow all of these steps. Again, it'll take us three steps for each number from now on. It'll be pretty quick. So we start with our original equation, y equals negative 2x plus 4. We substitute in the value of 1 for x. Negative 2 times 1 plus 4. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is equal to positive 2. We'll substitute that, stick it into our table of values. So we know when x is 0, y is 4. When x is 1, y is 2. Next, when x is equal to 2, well, let's take a look at that. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to, well, let's see, negative 2 times positive 2 gives you negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so y is equal to 0. Make sure to put that in our table of values. And our final x value is 3. Negative 2 times 3 gives us negative 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. And so that will be our fourth ordered pair, 3 negative 2. So that is our table of values. We've solved our table of values. We know when x is 0, y is 4. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 0. And when x is 3, y is negative 2. So all of the data or all of the, the math solutions that are up here, these four equations, I'm going to get rid of them and now and replace them with my graph. Because the question is asking me to graph. And now that I have my table of values, I don't need all that math work. I can just look at my table of values and go ahead and solve. I'm going to put a point at 0, 4. So I start at my origin right here. And I go 0 to the left or to the right. And then I go 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to put a point right there. Now, go ahead and just make a 1, 2, 3, 4, a dot right there. 
All right, so that's the point zero four right there. Next, I'm going to plot the point one two. I'll start at my origin, and my x value is one, so I'll move one to the right, and my y value is two, so I'm going to go up one two and put a point right there. That's my second point. My third point is the point two zero. So I'm going to start at my origin. My x value is 2, so I move 2 to the right. And my y value is 0, so I'm not moving up or down at all. I'm going to have my third point, 2, 0, right there. These points are looking pretty good. They're in a nice line. Let's check out our fourth point, 3, negative 2. We're going to go 3 along the x-axis. Negative 2 means I'm going down 2. So I'm going to make my point right about there. And these points definitely look collinear. These points are definitely in a row, so that's a good thing. And what we can do is draw a line through those points to represent where that graph would be. And my line is a little bit off there, but that's pretty good. And then we remember when we're drawing a line, we want to put arrows on both ends saying this line is extending in both directions infinitely, but those four points have given us a reference that we can draw a line and feel pretty confident that, that that work is correct. Again, you could just stick to three points, and if you do the work correctly, you'll have three in a row. Um, but making a fourth point kind of solidifies that. You definitely don't want to do just two points, because then if either of them are wrong, your line's going to be completely off. So you want to start out at least three points in your table of values when you're graphing a line. Using more just makes it more accurate, gives you a little bit more work, but you can be a little bit more sure that your work is correct.